Good afternoon. We'll be studying part three of chapter one, nature of logic. Basic concepts of logic. The basic concepts of logic is inference. What is an inference? Inference is a new belief which is formed on the basis or the evidences of the other beliefs. It is a mental process by which one Proposition is established on the basis of one or more propositions accepted as the starting point of the process. Now you can see here floods. So on the basis of this, what will you infer? By observing this flood, dead streets, one infers that it has rained heavily. What, what are you seeing in this picture? You are seeing that the two are arguing with each other. Okay? So one is trying to prove his or her point. Isn't it? By giving several reasons. Suppose in your case, you have liked a particular dress and you intend to buy. Then how will you convince your parents? What will you say? You will give certain reasons. Some reasons may be good and some may be bad. So, to prove your point or to establish your statement, you are saying that the dress is beautiful, the dress, the dress is sober, it is of reasonable price, it will suit you and so on. So, these are the good reasons to prove your point. So, what is an argument? An argument is nothing but reasons plus the statement which is established. So what is an argument? It is defined as a group of propositions in which one proposition is established on the evidence of the remaining propositions. Let us take an example. All artists are creative. Tanaya is an artist. Therefore, Tanaya is creative. Here, the evidences are all artists are creative. Tanaya is an artist. These are the reasons. So, they are called premises in logic. How will you define a premise? The statement or the proposition which is given as reason in support of the conclusion is called a premise and therefore tanaya is creative is the conclusion so what is the conclusion the statement or the proposition which is established see the examples of premises and conclusion indicators means what how will you recognize that which is the premise and the conclusion in an argument? So, argument consists of premises and of conclusion. Let us see how to recognize the premise and conclusion of an argument. Let us see. First example. Hethal did not go to the college because she was ill. Here, which is the statement which is proved? And which is the statement which is given as reasons in support of the other statement. How do you come to know that? What is the premise and what is the conclusion? Here, what is the premise indicator? The word because. And what is the premise? She was ill. Okay. So, what will be the conclusion? Hethal did not go to the college. This proposition is established on the basis of, on the evidence of, on the support of, she was ill. Now, let us take an other example. Since Rohini attended the lectures regularly and studied well, she scored good marks in logic. Here, the premise indicator is since. And what will be the premise? Rohini attended the lectures regularly and studied well. And what will be the conclusion? She scored good marks in logic. This is the statement which is established on the evidence of 
she attending the lectures regularly and studying well so what will be the premise rohini attended the lectures regularly and studied well this is the premise and what is the conclusion she scored good marks in logic now let us see what are the conclusion indicators the roads are flooded so we cannot go out so the word so indicates that we cannot go out is the conclusion and what will be the premise in, in what is its support which proposition has supported this statement we cannot go out the roads are flooded gives support to the conclusion so it is called the premise the roads are flooded is the premise and we cannot go out is the conclusion now we come to the fourth one it is very late hence you must go to bed here the word hence indicates that you must go to bed is the conclusion now what will be the premise then it is very late which supports the position it is the conclusion so now we come to the fifth you do not have the qualifications therefore you cannot acquire the job so here the word therefore indicates that you cannot acquire the job is the conclusion so what will be the premise you do not have the qualifications so now we have understood what the premise is and what the conclusion is now we go to the form of an argument it means the pattern or the structure of an argument it means the way in which you are presenting the argument and the content means the subject matter about which an argument is made what are you talking about what are you arguing about that is the content let us take few examples all men are wise so we have here the class of wise the wider class and the narrow class the class of men then amit individual amit is a man belongs to the class of men therefore you conclude that amit is wise so what is the subject matter or content of this argument the, the wider class wise the narrow class men and the individual amit let us take another example all doctors are rich so in the class of rich we have the class of doctors and sunil is the individual belongs to the class of doctors therefore you conclude that sunil is rich here what is the content of the argument class the wider class rich the narrow class doctors and the individual sunil now both these arguments have different content but they are of the same form what is the form of this argument let both these arguments have the same form but different content the form of these two arguments is all a is b x is a therefore x is b your a and b are classes and x is the individual now sometimes the arguments may have different forms but the same content so it depends upon the type of argument now we come to truth and falsity truth and false are the properties of a statement or proposition proposition is said to be true if it agrees with the facts of nature and a proposition is said to be false if it does not agree with the facts of nature let us see few examples what you can see a red rose so the statement i make is this rose is red 
Does it agree with the facts of nature? Yes, I can see that the rose is red. So, this proposition is a true proposition. Now, let us take another example. The earth is a flat disk. Can you see the earth? Yes. How is it? Not a flat disk. Therefore, this proposition is a false proposition. Now we will understand validity and invalidity. They are the properties of an argument. An argument is either valid or invalid. An argument is valid when the conclusion necessarily follows from the evidences in the premise. An argument is invalid when the conclusion does not necessarily follow from the evidences in the premises. Let us take few examples. First, all wild beings are animals, all tigers are wild beings, therefore all tigers are animals. In this argument, the conclusion, therefore all tigers are animals, necessarily follows from the premises, all wild beings are animals and all tigers are wild beings. So, this argument is valid. Let us take second example. If it rains, then the roads will be wet. The roads are wet. Therefore, it has rained. Here, the conclusion Therefore, it has rained does not necessarily follow from the premises. If it rains, then the roads will be wet and the roads are wet. Because the second premise, the roads are wet, may be due to several other reasons. That is due to leakage of water, water pipe, etc. So, this argument is invalid. So, in this session, we have studied the basic concepts in logic. That is, what is inference, what is an argument, what is premise, what is conclusion. In the next session, we will be studying the types of arguments. Thank you.